Post there as well, and Gambit now. Like you said, this is their last chance coming into this final round or this potential second final round. Gambit really needs to come away with a victory here. An important round to say the very least. Mo boosts up. There's no one here. That's so unfortunate as well. The one time they throw in a bit of a curveball, something to catch out that will typically get a free pick. It's Vega playing contact on B. Hoochie walking in, and Doja is none the wiser. He spots it and he stays alive at the very least, but he can't pull out a nade. He'll just get shot in the face. Hobbit looks to defend, but nothing comes out apart from a single kill. And that's not enough when Vega already have two picks in the bomb site. It's Gambit in for the retake. They have the option to save, but do they really want to give away him at point? I'm not sure that you do, but then again. If you do try and go for this retake and you come away with a loss, you're basically counting yourself out from the rest of the map here. Vegas Squadron have done an excellent job so far on their T side and they're only looking to capitalize on that. Adren does get maybe a bit of a cheeky kill there onto Kashandra. Checks the right angle, but Chopper is still there able to get the frag and now it is just Mo. Surely he has to back out now and perhaps he gets caught out. No, he doesn't. Quite aware of Chopper's position. But still, it's not going to be enough to win the round here for Gambit and Vega Squadron put themselves onto match point. What an upset this is as well. I mean, it was said on the desk, if Vega want to win anything, they've got to win overpasses. The only three, yeah. only one of three, they should be able to win, right? Even if it isn't their map pick, it's a map they're a little bit strong on. So, for them to actually look like they may do this, this series now is a, a big question mark. We're moving on to yeah. their map pick after this. If they take a victory on overpass, what happens on Mirage? It's a very, very good question, but perhaps we are counting our chickens before they hatch. Indeed. Still a good buy here for Gambit. That's, a, that's exactly. the best part. So, let's see what Gambit does decide to do here. Are they going to go a little bit aggressive again with that orb? It does seem as though they're going to be employing that same boost. Or not. That's really got to hurt. Those grenades have done a lot of work, and the player's gotten into the smoke. Oh, oh. it's gone awfully wrong there for Gambit. Hutchie just says, thank you very much for those two picks. I'll take the map. Gambit, they have to throw in the instant rotation, but the fact is, Vega have barely taken any map control, so they're far from committed. Gambit looked to hold off the A site with two players here, but Vega is still up towards short with the bomb. They're holding on to connector. They've got a player outside of B waiting for aggression. At this point, they know that it's very possible Gambit throw in some pushing. They want to bring back the man advantage in their favor, or at least try and equalize the two picks that were found by Hutchi. So Vega are in no position where they're forced to make a play. A minute on the clock. They can group up and reconvene towards a bomb site. Hobbit spots for info on long and he'll spot Mir. He needs to get this kill if he wants to at least pull this back somewhat, but not even given the opportunity. Falls back. 50 seconds on the clock. Vega. They're looking to commit towards his site. Chopper even finds another kill down towards B. That might even force a rotation, but they are hitting A. Oh my goodness, Adren goes down as well. It is just Hobbit left alive. You have to think for sure Vega Squadron are going to come away with the map victory here. 16 and 10. But still, there is hope if Hobbit is still alive. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, he can do something here. A lot of weight rests on his shoulders, though, as the bomb is now getting planted on that B bomb site. Sooner or later, his position will be given away, and that is going to be it. He does take a kill for his troubles, but still free to find. And he will go down. It's going to be 16-10 there for Vegas Squadron over Gambit. Who would have thought, coming into that one, we were going to get a victory out for Vegas Squadron? Certainly not me, the Vegas Squadron. Good performance. Yeah, very good performance. In fact, like, I, I wouldn't even say Vega throwed anything too special into that game. It was seven of deaths that Gambit need to under underperform and Vega overperformed. I certainly think Gambit underperformed. I don't think Vega played anything too special. They no. kind of just ran defaults. The T side was nice. They got good entries. They won their gunfights. There was nothing crazy thrown in there from Vega. It was just typical. And Gambit just did not show up to that map. That is a worrying prospect when you lose your map pick up against what should be a serious underdog. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that one. But 16-10 there for Vegas Squadron on Overpass. You've heard from us. Now it's time to hear from the analysts. Let's send it back over to Danny and the guys. <laughs> well, I mean, we are wrong sometimes. But uh, I mean, hardly, I'd, I'd like to have ever. an excuse for this one. But there you have it. Vegas Squadron taking it out quite convincingly in the end. And it looked like Gambit kind of didn't really have any answers for it. I mean, I'm not the analyst here, so I'm going to pass the buck over to you guys. Break it down for us. Vegas Squadron, 1-0 up in the best of three against Gambit. Well, we said anything could happen, and, uh, well, it certainly has here. I mean, Gambit just looked very flat at the moment, and uh, obviously JR and Chopper just going absolutely massive. So, I mean, uh, you could just see, even towards the end of that map, it was just a last-ditch effort for Gambit. I thought they were just maybe a little bit overconfident in the uh, latter half of the first half where they were just opting for like a mixed buy of rifles and pistols and thinking perhaps seven rounds is enough. And you can see here they're way ahead on six for two and they really just let uh, Vegas Squadron back into this. Yeah, indeed. Kevin, 
thoughts? Well, firstly, I did say that it was a potential. It wasn't the, I wasn't the guy who said it was going to be a clean 2-0 for Gambit. I said if Vega Squadron turned up and Gambit didn't, they were flatter than a Coke left outside the, in the sun for too long. This could have happened, and overpass was the best bet for Vega Squadron. All of them just hitting their shots, and at the end of the day, on the T-side, if they're just so confident hitting their shots, making it look so easy, Gambit, there's just an amount of time where their economy is not going to be sputtering up on the CT side, and that's exactly what happened. Just not enough guns on the CT side, and the T is just rolling it to the victory at the end of the day, which yeah. Vegas Squadron did. Yeah, I mean, there you have it. First map done. Overpass 10, 16 to Vegas Squadron, somewhat the underdogs here. When can Gambit come back from this? I think they can, but looking at Vegas Squadron, uh, the problem is, as Kevin was saying, Gamb Gambit needed to underperform, and that's exactly what's happening right now. We didn't really see a lot of them go off. A lot, of, Most of their kills, or uh, their trade kills, was only one kill each, so it wasn't really enough. Uh, Adren, Adren and Hobbit really suffered, or had a lot of problems at the B side on the CT side, so there was a lot of problems coming in for Gambit. So I do think that Gambit can still come back from this, but there's some magic in for coming in from Vega Squadron. Yeah, I mean, obviously we do see it go uh, a lot of the time where the opposite map picks are won by the teams that didn't select them, an opportunity. But Mirage, how are Gambit going to shape up on this map? Look, uh, Gambit are typically a very strong Mirage team. And uh, uh, by the same token, it's one of Vega Squadron's strongest maps as well. So I knew coming into this that no matter what the map would be, that we were going to see a pretty close game uh, depending on which Gambit showed up. This is the flat Gambit. This is the Gambit we saw lose a map to Splice. Uh, so going into this next map, you know, again, we can't rule Vega Squadron out. I still will tip my hat towards Gambit, uh, even in the series, still going 2-1. And at the end of the day, right now, it just looks like Vega Squadron want it more. And Gambit really just need to get out of this jet lag, get out of this slump, whatever they're in. Uh, because otherwise, this, this is going to be a 2-0 for Vega Squadron. Now, the way that Chopper was just hitting those shots towards the end there, they just, uh, Gambit had no response. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of steam in the engine that is Vega Squadron right now. Kevin, can they keep it up for all three maps, potentially? Absolutely. There's no reason that they can't. I mean, they, it's like you just rolled into Overpass. It'll, they were down for a little bit, but they just so confidently took out the second half. And as long as they keep that forward, they can keep it forward. They just got to believe in themselves. Yeah, they're well, still, uh, they're, I would agree with Ian, they're still the underdogs. But, yeah. they're in it with a big shot now. Yeah, big shot indeed. And we'll be moving on to that second map, Mirage, on the other side of this break.
Are we going to see the downfall of Faisal oh, today? I think so. I, think so. I have a feeling. The first fighting game you ever lose at. Come on. No, because I want my super girl. Yeah, 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 Faisal. Come on. Oh! Oh! oh there jump, we go! Jump, yeah! oh, jump! Oh, are you kidding me? Please Faisal, tell me I'm not going to lose. Okay, <laughs> I finally figured it out. <laughs> come on, man. Oh my come god, on, come on, come on. Come on! Yeah. Oh, 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 oh! Come on, come on, come on! Oh my god! Okay, I think I'm going to switch sides. Sorry, Team Faisal! Oh! 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 Vegas Squadron has snuck one under the radar and gotten the first map overpassed off of Gambit. And now it's the question's been asked. Gambit, can they bring some of that class that we know them for on the second map? Well, I don't think so. I mean, uh, it's not looking good for them. They do look extremely flat at this point and uh, maybe a little bit too cocky in that first map. Yeah, <laughs> well, cocky being the word. I mean, is a map enough to really let them look at what they've been doing wrong and come back and give Vega respect? Or are they just going to be like, hey, that's an anomaly. Let's just go and do our thing. It's, honestly, it's just going to be a five-minute smoke break. Come back and <laughs> uh, hop into Mirage and uh, try and hit your shots there because, I mean, Gambit, they've played a lot of Mirage. I mean, yeah. they're no strangers to it. They're versus the best teams in the world on Mirage. Uh, Vega Squadron really shouldn't be a problem for Gambit. Yeah, Kevin? That's what everyone was saying, though. It shouldn't be a problem. Uh, overpass was a problem. Yeah, so, Mirage has been a problem for Gambit in this tournament. It was against Splice, and we shouldn't take too much out of it. It was two days ago. But if there was any indication of how they went, I mean, even with the second matchup against Splice again on Mirage, they were up so heavily in the lead, 13-3, after taking the pistol on their CT side, and still they let Splice take seven more rounds afterwards. You can't be doing that to Vega Squadron. That was Splice, and I'd say that Vega Squadron playing right now are a level above Splice. Definitely the case. I mean... What I was saying, Gambit, I think we'd we'll all agree as well, a lot of people out there would agree that we do put a lot of emphasis onto Gambit. You know, they've won the, probably the, the biggest tournament that has gone by this year thus far. Are we giving them a bit too much here? Are they, you know, they, the lineup has changed, times have changed, they're not as good. Are we just kind of living in the past a little bit for this Gambit lineup? Or can, do they have that kind of reveling experience when? Uh, hopefully, you know, because again, you get a lot of experience being media winners, right? So you bring that a lot to more more tournaments where uh, a lot of the other teams don't have that much experience with it. So again, Gambit is a team that can lose and then come back. So hopefully they'll bring it back in the second game. Again, against Vegas Garden, they were looking very good in the first game. So a little bit of worry there for Gambit. Yeah, a little bit of worry as well. A little bit of worry for you, Kev, because you and uh, Sniper will be playing a little bit of uh, 1v1 on these laptops here on these tables. And uh, they're pretty good laptops, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I smashed Ian, that's why it looks really, really sad right now. <laughs> totally. How, how can the people at home win one of these laptops on the desk, Kevin? Well, see, you have to have a phone firstly, or a camera. You don't cable. have your phone on you? Um, he if I don't, then that's a concern. I might have my phone or not, so anyone I'll leave that wanting, for intrigue. Anyone wanting to sponsor Kev with a phone? <laughs> with a phone. Okay, if anyone wants to give Karath a phone so it can take a selfie and enter the ROG Masters Selfie Challenge, if you want to win one of these ASUS ROG laptops, post a selfie watching the ROG Masters Grand Finals on your social media account using hashtag ROG Masters. And you can win one of these gaming laptops and maybe you can challenge Sniper or, or Kevin here. I know which one I definitely want to challenge. I'm burnt toast. <laughs> <laughs> burnt toast. I, I don't know, actually. Ian, when, you know, when Ian first retired and then he came back, he was looking so sharp. Wow. What can I say? Oh, yeah. He's wearing a suit, he's got his pin, he's got I his I wasn't headset. talking about his <laughs> justice looks, <laughs> mate. I, I wasn't talking just his looks. I always look sharp, don't I, Danny? But yeah, speaking of uh, sharp there, you know, you don't have to look that good. You could be in your PJs, your boxer shorts, probably probably have some clothes on. Yeah, Best that's thing. a good start, right? Well, Jordan takes him in hot pants and swimming pools, so he likes to show some skin, but, you know, we like to keep a PG and take a shot and uh, you can win one of these laptops. Wouldn't be too bad, would it? Yeah, it wouldn't be too bad at all. But speaking of which, uh, speaking of bad gambit, if they go out 2-0 <laughs> really? to Vegas Squadron, yeah, it's a long stretch. I'd like but, to see uh, Dosia hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe have a talk to him at breakfast tomorrow. If Gambit go out 2-0. Yeah. 
Credit to Vegas Squadron or question mark for Gambit? A bit of both. Yeah. I mean, look, if look, you've already got to give Vegas Squadron credit. They've gotten a map off Gambit, right? So, uh, you know, despite the rankings, what they would tell you, uh, they're up there and as good as Gambit in this particular instance. And I mean, it's up to Gambit now to perform exactly like Tyloo did and get that res reverse sweep. Yeah, Kevin, I mean, what's changed for Vega? I mean, you never would have thought that this could be possible. We didn't really. That's the information we are going on. Yeah. On that group stage, right? I mean, Some the people. form that they were having in group stage? No, you thought... No, I thought it was bit? possible. Yeah, I yeah. thought... I, <laughs> anything is possible in Counter-Strike. It's always a matter of percentages. Even though 99% of the time a team may win, there's always that 1%. It wasn't that skewed for Vegas Squadron, obviously, but obviously a little bit more for Gambit, but that percentage was still there, so... All right, so, I mean, this was a fairly Gambit leaning side before. Obviously. One more opportunity before we hop into the second map to kind of change your mind. Can Vegas Squadron do this? I'm going to stick with my guns here, and I'm just going to stick with uh, Gambit. Kevin? I still reckon the safe, smart thought is for Gambit to come back, yep. but who knows? That's why Counter-Strike is such a wonderful game, because you can never come in and actually fully analyze all be happening because they'll be boring then. They'll pay you, don't they? Well, I've been pretty <laughs> accurate so far. I mean, that's probably the first one I've gotten wrong, to be honest. So, Absolutely. and when round uh, us out, I'm going with Gambit as well, so that if you all are wrong, we are all wrong together. Well, there you have it. Now it's back to the brother casting duo. A <laughs> little bit of insight here Jordan's family was cast to Australia because they're all convicts, while Hugo's family was raised by the tuition of Richard Branson's entourage. That's the separation in class, but they're both here to give you a great game. Here's Jordan and Hugo. I feel like I'm getting the short end of the stick here a little bit. Yeah, come on, don't, don't uh, leak all of our history, come on. Yeah, anyway, I mean, the analysts, they're all going for Gambit. They're all saying they're going to come back. Uh, I did say Vega 2 over for the game, that's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm necessarily on the board with you, <laughs> but there's a chance here now. I mean, Vegas Squadron looked really good in that, and you sort of said, and I kind of agree yeah. with you as well, that they didn't really seem like they had to pull out all the stops in that one. They did kind no. of just play default. That was pretty easy for them, it seemed, especially mm. in that second half. I mean, on a nice streak of T-side rounds, considering they got six in the first half and still managed to take the game, what, 16-10? Uh, yeah. Like, that's, that's crazy that they gave up one round on their T-side. Again, versus Gambit, a team that's usually very strong on their CT sides as well, you know, it's kind of the T sides are a little bit lackluster in terms of teamwork there. So, yeah, I'm impressed at Vega. And I, I, jokes aside, after seeing that performance, I don't think Gambit is showing up. I think, I honestly think Vega are going to 2-0. Indeed, but in saying that, we are moving on to Mirage, which again yeah. is kind of a different beast here for Gambit. And, and to the same token for Vega Squadron, we know both of these teams actually coming into this map are very, very good on it. So, I wonder if that throws a bit of a curveball here into... Uh, yeah, picture. I would certainly say that that makes a big difference in terms of Gambit's T sides at the very least now moving on to this map. It's far easier to just kind of pug this map and while that's typically kind of like Vegas style, right? I, I think it's also going to work in the way of Gambit in, in the sense that they should be good on the T sides. But they need to get through that CT side first. So we're going to be jumping right in. Second map here, Gambit's chance of retribution to pull the reverse sweep like Tyloo did earlier to get into the grand finals. Well, Vega close it out in two and head into the finals for tomorrow. We're going straight into it. Vega fast to mid. Lots of players here looking to split that A site. Yeah, Molotov there as well for Chopper. So we'll see whether or not that's going to have anything used for it later on in this round. But into the A-bomb side, in fact, it's a bit Ooh. of an A split actually out on this pistol round. And Mir does get the opening frag onto Mo. There's a trade straight away back though from Hobbit. And he's going to take the duel against JR, but that does not work out too well for him. JR under a lot of pressure though, gets the reload off, but it's not going to be enough. Fitch finding a couple, and that does pull the player advantage back in the favour of Gambit. Oh. Although, two very quick kills out from Hutch G and Chop. Like, where did that come from? <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. I lost the for answer. words. Ridiculous start here for Vegas Squadron, but it's certainly what they needed if they wanted to close us out in two. Get off to a good start before Gambit do. Yeah. And now we have pistols in play for the CT side. I'm impressed by Vegas so far, but they can't afford to throw away this round because we have that force up from this T half. Yeah. Mo saving, or not even saving, he was holding on to just a CZ, but he's got armor as well. So not even trying to bring that AWP in early like we know he can, but Vega are a team that don't really have as much prolific helping the T side early on, or at least they didn't in that previous half in overparts. They actually didn't even bring the AWP in on the T side until they picked it up. So Gambit, they won't have one to contend with, I imagine. Again, that mid-control attempted by Vega Squadron. Hobbit does manage to open things up here. Has the opportunity for another one, but will be traded out. Still, Vega Squadron not looking too bad here as they are oh. starting to gain control of the map. And that was a very nice shot out from Hachi. A lot of options now available for Vega Squadron. Could go B. Seems like that might be the best option, given that there is a player sort of still hanging around towards T-Apps and could very quickly retrieve that bomb and head into the site. But 
Plenty of time to work with for Vega Squadron, so they don't need to rush into anything just yet. And Mo is spotted out and dispatched off. Good utility use out from Vega Squadron in this round. They're really not leaving anything to chance. Yeah, I like it. Playing very methodical as well. I mean, if, even if we look back to that 1v5 versus Hobbit in the previous map, they still played it very, very slow despite having a massive advantage, and they continue to do the same. Never underestimate Gambit, but Doja, he can't connect a shot from the site. It's Cassandra to drop him and Vega to open up B. Fitch, he's the last man standing, and to be honest, I think just exits at the very most. I don't think he should even push into the site. I wouldn't even be worried at a save, try and bring this into the next round. Have another chance when your team are on USPs, but Vega, two rounds. Yeah, it's definitely the ideal start for Vega Squadron, really. They haven't really lost anything in this either, just a MAC-10. They did come into it with two of them, so Vega Squadron, good early start from them. But an early start is just that. It needs to be converted. I guess we, again, really can't read too much into it until we start to see those gun rounds coming out here. For me, after these pistols, it's, it's more or less a formality. Yeah, the worrying thing is, as well, if we look back to that previous map, is, yeah, Gambit get 10 rounds, but they won the pistol and the conversions very cleanly, so, you know, three rounds came off the back of that. Now Vega is starting things off with their own pistol, and, and so far the conversions, I imagine they'll find this third. You know, they're going to be coming into this game already with a big lead versus Gambit, and who are facing elimination here in the semifinals. I can't say I'm not worried for Gambit, because I really am. Mm. I, I, I think this could easily slip from their grasp. So when we get into that by next round, they need to start it off. Yeah, I mean, when we're really talking about it, it is just one map now that Vegas Squadron need to win. And we talk about best of ones, always necessarily favoring the uh, underdogs. And I guess still in this scenario, Vegas Squadron are the underdogs, but they're definitely not making them look like it as Gambit just to fall to bits. It is, of course, just an anti-eco for Vegas Squadron, but they're making it look very, very comfortable. Should be 3-0 momentarily here for them. As Mir cleans things up with a nice headshot onto Dozier. And now we will finally get our first little taste of how the rest of this map is going to go. As the guns